All right. Renee, you're on. Thanks. All right. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to keep this relatively short because we're a little bit over time. Uh, but first of all, I want to thank everyone that has submitted an app to the app competition. There were outstanding applications this year. Um, and as Austin already mentioned, we had a really tough choice in, in, in selecting the finalists. Uh, we've selected five finalists in the end that we think um, should uh, are should be on a, in the spotlight today, um, and 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 you really should uh, enjoy the the presentations that are coming up um, from them. Um, there is. Uh, let me see. I'm, I have, as I, as Austin mentioned, I have a list in front of me, and we're going to start off. Um, I'm going to go with the order a little bit, and then I'll explain how the voting works. Um, first of all, Hespi Uganda, uh, Albert is going to show us the visualization studio. Then um, Salih Yusuf from uh, his Indonesia will show Jumpa Doctor, an Android application. Uh, then there is Eric from his Tanzania who will be showing us the analytics messenger. Um, then uh, Chaturanga, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it correctly, will show um, the growth and nutrition monitoring system. And then finally, uh, we have uh, Nacho from uh, ICT who will show the homepage app. And we have two Android applications and three web applications this year. And they will all be sharing the same, uh, all be in the same pool, unlike last year, if you're familiar with how it went last year that we had a separate vote for both Android and uh, web. Um, there will be a vote after the presentations are done. Um, and that means that uh, once the last presentation is done, you can go to the community of practice to vote. Uh, there will be a poll up as soon as the last one is done. I will be sharing a QR code so everyone can just take their phone and scan the QR code and directly go to the COP um, and make sure you're logged in there and then you can vote. Um, Okay, I, I'm just gonna hand it over as we're half an hour past the, the schedule time, which is totally fine. Um, there is seven minutes for each finalist. Um, and Albert, I'm not sure if you're already a co-host, but I wanna hand it over to you, unless there's anything I need to mention before that. Um, and then you can start your presentation. Thank you, Rene. Uh, I'll share my screen. Please confirm that you can see my screen. Yes, we yes, see. I can see it here. Yeah. So hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Albert Mutesasa from Hisp Uganda. And this afternoon, I'm here to present to you an innovative solution that addresses some of the limitations of the current dashboarding tools. And that solution is the DHS2 Visualization Studio app. Now, this application is a dashboarding tool that aims at revolutionizing data analysis and visualization by tackling the several crucial challenges that we have right now. Now, um, previously, the DHS2 community has often been facing a challenge of lack of real-time data updates while analyzing data, uh, secure public access in form of public portals, intuitive visualization of data on one instance for multiple data instances or data, data sources rather including different DHS2 instances and also data from other external systems, which are non-DHS2. We also looked at highly customizable charts to the liking of the user. Now, this deficiency significantly hampers effective analysis and visualization, especially when real-time insights and public accessibility are of utmost importance. Now, the solution, uh, uh, on top of the, the problem, we... The previous solutions were project specific, uh, thereby, I'm, I'm having trouble with, uh, okay. Good. Previous solutions were project specific and required developing dashboards after dashboards and they were time consuming. So uh, above all that, we come up with a solution which is the data visualization application. And this offers live data monitoring. This enables real time data analysis for timely insights and decision making. Uh, it also offers display of data from diverse sources, including different 
DHS2 instances and other non-DHS2 external sources. It also offers a uh, an ability to create custom indicators using metadata, and it can be metadata from different DHS2 instances or even other non-DHS2 instances or non-DHS2 systems. It also uh, you, it also provides the the the, the, the ability to access dashboards without login, but also putting uh, security without compromising security. It also offers the, the, the ability for flexible chatting, meaning that it provides a versatile and customizable chatting system for effective and visualization. Uh, did I mention it is also highly, highly customizable to the dot. Um, uh, we, this work we have done, uh, uh, some collaboration with 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 one of the his groups, which is his Rwanda, and it came on board in the later stages of the development because they are facing a similar problem. So we have been working together in terms of collaboration and using different tools to come up with a perfect product for this one here. Um, we have used this application in 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 a number of use cases in Uganda here. One of them is uh, are the campaign dashboards. So we customize the campaign dashboard using the Visualization Studio application, and these are real time, meaning that data is displayed as it comes in. We've also customized the Uganda Manifesto dashboards. Uh, this is in the department. This is in the office of the president. We've also worked with the uh, Ministry of Education in Uganda to customize the school-based surveillance dashboard using the Visualization Studio app. We've also worked with the WHO in uh, Uganda here to come up with, uh, with interactive dashboards or an online visualization tool, which was also customized using the Visualization Studio app. We've also worked with the surveillance department in the Ministry of Health to come up to customize the EVD dashboard, and this is real time also. Um, th this, 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 these are screenshots of some of the use cases we've worked on. This is the polio vaccination campaign dashboard, which is real time. This is the the office of the president, the manifesto dashboard. This one is not real time. Uh, this is the the measles rubella campaign dashboard, and this is also real time. This one is the the WHO dashboard, the online visualization tool, which has also customized using the Visualization Studio application. This one is the, the screenshot for, for the SBS dashboard, the school-based surveillance dashboard, which was also customized in using the Visualization Studio application. This one is the yellow fever application. Now you, you must be seeing zeros because this is real time. Data is going, this, th these are queries already waiting for data to come in to be displayed. And as soon as data comes in, uh, the data will be displayed here. And it has a, it has a refresh interval of 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, it refreshes the dashboard and it displays this data here. Um, this, th these are, th this is how the, the application looks like. And uh, with that presentation, I'll take you through a small demo of what this does. So this is, a, this, is already an, uh, this is already a dashboard that I have made before. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you what we, the process of creating a dashboard. So here, you create a data source. As you can see, we have uh, different data sources here. This instance here is the eidsr.health.go.ug, but I've created uh, more than four data sources. One of them is this one that is coming from the HMIS, and you see the URL is different. This other one is uh, is the ECBSS, which is coming also from the another instance. The URL is also different. And after there, you can create a category, which is like a program area. Then you go ahead and create a visualization query, which I've already created one, so we won't have to go through that. Then after creating a query, you can create an indicator, which in turn we are going to use to create a dashboard. So I've created one of uh, one dashboard to for this particular purpose here, and I'm going to show you how we create this one. So it, it like I said, it is highly customizable from from the filters to the dashboards to the logos, etc., etc. Now, assuming that I have another sponsor for this particular work I'm doing, I can just go ahead here and add a logo for that particular sponsor here. Um, this, this is going to be an image. I'll add the image. Then after adding the image, I can upload this image. Let me get maybe his Uganda is sponsoring this one. And I apply that and my logo will come down here. Let me say I have another, another sponsor here. 
I can add another sponsor down here. Th th these are already created dashboards. This is already an, a created dashboard. So I can add a single value here. Like this, I add a visualization. I give it a title. Let us say presumptive, presumptive TB cases, right? I can, uh, I can come here. My query is this one here, which is the percentage of presumptive TB cases identified in OPD. And this time it is a single value, something like that. So it is zero. But uh, uh, since it is a percentage, I can say my, my number <laughs> format style is a percent, something like that. So I can play around with these configurations. I can play around with the title. Um, I can, um, I, I, configurations. We're at seven minutes. Okay. Um, okay. But that's a, a great presentation and a great dashboard. Um, and thank you for, for sharing your visualization studio. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Is the next presenter in the meeting? Because I'm looking for Saldi Yusuf from HISP Indonesia for the next presentation. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, apologies. Yeah. Well, um, well, We'll move over to um, the third presentation, uh, and hopefully, um, uh, Saldi Youssef will be here with us soon. Uh, but then next is Eric from his Tanzania, and he will show the uh, analytics messenger. Uh, Eric, floor is yours. And I cannot hear you yet. Hello, everyone. Yes, perfect. Yeah, I hope you can see my screen. Yes. All right, so I'll start right now. Yeah, my name is Eric Chingalo, system developer from HISP Tanzania, and I'll be presenting to you the DHS2 Analytics API Messenger. So just a little background. Over the past 20 years, we've seen the evolution of the DHS2 as a platform, but this has been greatly influenced by the technology trends from having Microsoft Access as database to having the DHS2 capture up as a mobile technology. So in light of this, we also saw a massive growth in the use of the social messaging platforms such as Facebook, WhatsApp, as the number shows over there. So this brought us an alert that we have a potential bringing DHS2 closer to users through these social messaging platforms. And that's where the, the whole idea around the DHS2 analytics messengers come about. So you might ask what this app is. DHS2 analytics messenger is an application that leverages the use of the DHS2 analytics together with the popular messaging social messaging platforms such as WhatsApp to deliver analytics closer to the user. It mainly takes the DHS2 analytics and brings them to the user through these messaging platforms. And you might be wondering how, how did we end up doing all this? So we, we divided this solution into two components, the analytics assistant, which is, which is a chatbot solution, and together with the analytics messenger, which is more like a push analytics solution. This is a web app. So uh, for those who are having smartphones, you can try to scan this QR code to see the analytics assistants. Uh, you are very welcome to join this demo as I explained. Well, once you scan this chat, this this QR code, you can just type hello DHS2 or hello, then you'll get a flow, a more of a instruction on how you can get the visualization in a more easier way. So within less than 30, less than 30 seconds, you find yourself having the visualization is how this video shows. So I'd urge you all to scan and use this, but these resources are going to be available after this slide. This is only one part of the DHS2 analytics messenger. Well, the second part is the analytics messenger itself. This is a web app now that allows pushing, allows pushing of, of the DHIS2 through the WhatsApp number, WhatsApp groups. So this now allows you to have a WhatsApp group configured and you can be able to send your numbers there, send your visualizations there. So you can scan this QR code and be able to join this group or scan this link over there. But you might be wondering why only manually. So this also allows scheduling of this push analytics. So 
you can schedule the analytics to be sent automatically, but also we, we, are, we are using this messenger app to configure these analytics in the web app so that you can be able to, to configure the analytics which are publicly available, but also to configure the flow through the chatbot that I just presented before. Well, we can now try to see the demo of how this web app looks like. So I'll go to the instance. So this is the demo that we are having. So our app is called the Analytics Messenger. And within this app, as I said before, you can configure first the gateways. This is more like a communication between your DHS2 instance and the, and, the, and the analytics services. But also on the other hand, we are also allowing you to configure the visualizations which are publicly available through the Messenger app. So in here, it's very simple. You just have to name your group, let's say TB. And then you can be able to filter among the DHS2 existing favorites. So let's say here, this is a list of favorites coming from the DHS2 instance. So you can search from them and select which ones you want to be available. So this is more like what we are having right now. But oh, that's just the configuration part. The fun part is the analytics, push analytics part. Where in here, you can be able to push your analytics. And you can do it by just naming your analytics. Let's say I'll name this as API, and then select a gateway a service that we're going to use, which is already configured to sending these visualizations and selecting which visualization group you want to send together with the, with the actual visualization from the filtered list. You can also send messages concerning this visualization, let's say a simple, the simple description of this visualization. But the fun part is we are allowing you either to send through WhatsApp groups, through phone numbers, but also through, through WhatsApp group, through phone numbers, but also through DHS2 users configured. For the sake of this demo, I just use the group and you can scan this cube, you can scan the QR code. I'll, I'll, for those who are able to scan the QR code, you'll be able to see this visualization. I'll bring you back to the slide later on. So, okay, very sorry, it seems like the server has gone down a bit. Yeah, so we, we, have, we have received a number of requests. So it seems like the WhatsApp server has gone down. The technical team is going to help me to set it up. So yeah, by saving, by configuring this one, you're able to save and this person can get this visualization at any time. So what we have done, we are allowing you to either send them directly or schedule them. So for instance, I can try to schedule. I had this already created. So I had this, yeah. So for those who are joining the group, we'll be able to see this. You can schedule it up and add your scheduling mechanism. And we have made it very easy for you. So you can say, let's say your visualization you want it to be sent every day midnight, for instance, or let's say five minutes. So by just adding this, after five minutes, those members joined by the group of DHS2 visualization will be able to get this visualizations there. Well, you forgive me for the for the server. Seems like it has been down. We have lots of people here today. So I'll continue the slide and I'll present to you. I don't know if you are seeing my screen. So what are the impact of this solution? First of all, as a senior manager, you'll be able to view this, you'll be able to view visualizations directly. You, as a senior manager, you'll be able to at instantly get data directly from the assistant, but just by just making a normal conversation. While on the other side, as a national program manager, through the DHS2 analytics messenger, you can send your visualization to the program managers groups so that they can get more notification concerning it. Well, this has been all. I have this COP post in the community of practice. You can try to scan this QR code. All the resources are going to be found here. And for those who aren't able to follow up the demo, we'll share the links there so that you can follow up easily and get to know more about us. We can also chat through our email info at hispitanzania.org. Thank you so much for your, your cooperation. That has been all. Don't forget to vote for us. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. It was but a again, great... Maybe just to rephrase, like uh, we, we are going to sort out the server issue. It seems like we had lots of resources of requests from the members, so you will forgive, forgive us for the inconvenience.
Of course. Thank you for your amazing presentation. Um, and you were nicely in time, so perfect. Um, we're gonna move over to the next presentation. Um, this is going to be done by Chaturanga from his Sri Lanka, and uh, they will present a Android application. Um, the first Android application that we had planned is uh, either going to be moved to the back. Uh, hopefully, um, Saldi Yusuf will be here uh, in time. Um, but until then, uh, Chaturanga, good luck with your presentation and um, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much and uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you can actually see my uh, screen over here. Yeah, I and, can see um, it. Yeah, so I'm uh, presenting, um, I'm Chaturanga from the Ministry of Health, Sri Lanka, and uh, I'm presenting today uh, Growth and Nutrition Monitoring System, a custom made Android based mobile application. Um, which is developed by uh, Sri Lanka, his Sri Lanka, and which is um, which actually using the Android SDK, which is provided by the DHIS2 team, and uh, which act, acts as a tracker capture program on DHIS2 for the ground level field health officers uh, uh, who are like, you know, public health uh, midwives. So when you initially come to the application, when you uh, click on it, and you will be prompted with the logging screen. And um, as you can see, I have actually logged into the uh, application. So once you logged into the application, you can actually see these uh, uh, the trialing. Well, like you know, we have uh, multicultural uh, ethnicities. So we have uh, Sinhalese, Tamil, and English. So I'll head on to the English version. So when you inside the uh, inside the application, you'll be prompted with like dashboard, and where you can actually get the information from. And um, on the bottom of the screen, you can see the syncing and the changing of the language if you uh, accidentally hit on it, um, hit on the wrong language. So the, in here, you can uh, tap on this. Uh, in here, you can actually see all the registrations and other programs such as like, you know, supplementary feeding program, therapeutic feeding program. I'm, I'm and, sorry to interrupt, but we don't yeah. see your screen moving. Uh, can you see? We see the login see. screen. Really? Hold on. Yes. I'm also pausing the timer for a bit to make sure you're working again. Oh. Give me a minute. Can you see the screen now? Yes, I see your screen, yeah. Yeah, so I'll start from the beginning. So uh, once you're logged in, you can see the uh, the, the trilingual uh, interface. And I'm going into the English pro, uh, language and you can actually see all these uh, um, information at a glance. You can actually see all of this. And um, you know the different programs we are actually having like therapeutic supplement feeding, therapeutic feeding program, uh, likewise. So in be my uh, area details, if you go into that, you can actually see all the children which are um, in your area. Like, you know, this um, like ground level uh, field officers can actually have a look at uh, their children in, uh, in, in their area. So all children and active and uh, once the children is uh, completed, like, you know, they have received all the treatment, uh, it'll be in the completed area. So once you go uh, back to the dashboard, um, you can actually see this child registration, which we have actually um, uh, categorized into three parts, where the ch child's uh, information, whereas like uh, uh, the, the Gramanila Dari area, which, uh, which is the smallest administrative area in Sri Lanka, and birth and immunization registration number, and you know the name, age, um, like you know date of birth, all of that, ethnicity, all of that information, and then mother's information, um, like mother's name, uh, national identity card number, like that. And if there is, like you know, unfortunately, if the mother is uh, passed away or something like that, then the caregiver's uh, information and the birth details of the child. So I have prepared and um, ch uh, child already. 
And once you enter the child's details, you can actually see the, uh, the child's details as in a matter of like this. So if you, want, if you have accidentally entered different data, you can actually simply uh, tap on the edit button and you can change the name like that and submit it again. So now I have already enrolled this child into like few different programs. So the basic information like, um, you know, the anthropometry tracking. So um, anthropometry tracking is like, um, it continuously hap happening, like repeated data periodically done by the ground level uh, field officer, right? So it, it, it's a spontaneous plotting in the system. So, so once you actually enter these data, you can actually see um, in a graph, like we actually have this graph where we can actually plot the data and you can get a, a good uh, information about the child, how this child is actually receiving these, um, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, treatments. So also I want to highlight that in length and the weight, sorry. Yeah, uh, in the length and the weight uh, programs, we have uh, incorporated this uh, color scheme of this uh, uh, the charts. So if you put like uh, something like this, it'll go into a red color. Or um, if you put uh, another value, like, you know, it depends on the age of the child. So when you tap on that, you select submit and plot the chart, and you can see that it should change. See, it, it has changed. So that's actually incorrect data. That's why it has gone up. So like that, you can actually have the anthropometry data. So in the nutrition, uh, nutrition specific intervention tracking, we have separate uh, application in the system. So we have this uh, supplementary data, therapeutic uh, data uh, program likewise. So I'll, um, basically all these uh, application have, uh, um, you know, um, uh, few section like, uh, uh, you uh, enrollment is a one-time action and the system intervention monitoring, which is done periodic periodically to facilitate uh, of data entry and those intervention packages. Um, and then evidence-based intervention follow, uh, of, uh, following of outcoming out of the uh, child of following these interventions such as recovery. So I'll go into this uh, supplementary feeding program. Um, so indication for the posture, which is the supplementary feeding program we are actually uh, giving away for the children. So you enter the date and let's just say that this child is having moderate acute malnutrition, you submit it and that is just one time. So then you have the intervention, which will be repeatedly like periodically happening. So I'll just say no triposha, or let's just say that this child is on triposha. So how many packers we were, we have given the child. So whether if the child is given in counseling, yes, like that, we can submit it. So once it's done, we have the outcome of it. So you select the child and you select what's the outcome of this child, whether if the child is recovered, uh, whether the child is sent to therapeutic feeding program or defaulted or left the area or left due to un, uh, completion of age five, because this is uh, targeted on under five children and whether the child has passed away. So um, then again, I want to highlight that this is, um, we are going to collaborate with this cross sectors, like um, it's a, it's system, the uniqueness is that we are actually going to get, get involvement of these multi-sector people. So cross-sector collaboration with them. So we have um, um, developed the web-based system uh, in the, the in, in from the mobile application, the Android application, it will just- I'm, I'm afraid uh, I have to interrupt you here. Um, that yes. was the seven minutes. I gave you a little bit extra time because of the technical difficulties that were out of your control. Uh, yeah. Uh, could just give me like, you know, one more minute, one minute or two minutes. If, um, if that's no, a... no, no, we, we need to keep, um, keep everyone to the same time. Oh, uh, sure, but if you have sure, a, sure. a final word, that would be okay. Yeah. Uh, so th this will be the, uh, so the select program, uh, you have like a section of like uh, recent point enrollments. Uh, we have, uh, whether the moderate acute malnutrition, long standing. Likewise, we have, uh, selected the, few of these uh, uh, 
problems of the child. Let's just say that this child is again having these problems. Um, yeah, uh, so, sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, so Thank that's, so yeah, of course, of course. Sorry, I have to interrupt you here, but um, we're gonna be having to keep everyone to the same time. It was a great oh. application, it looks really good. Um, as with all the other uh, presentations so far. Um, but thank you. Um, then it's up to Nacho. Um, are you here for Hello. the homepage you... app? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfectly. I'm going to try to share my screen. So please let me know when um, you can see it. Can you? I can see your desktop, yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. And hello, everybody. I will be, I won't be super long. Um, and they actually will cut me in seven minutes. So there's no chance that I, I'm not uh, short. And we will be parting right after. I'm with you. I'm with you in spirit, but I'm physically like 15 meters uh, far from you. There were some technical issues in that building. And so I needed to present remotely. I'm here to announce you. Um, that on uh, at ICT, I'm Nacho from ICT, and at ICT, we had a baby, actually. And this baby is now nine months old. We are super proud of her. She's uh, doing very well. And is coming to a family that is this family DHS to ICT suite that I'm presenting you here. Um, for those of you that don't know what we do, we are um, doing what we think is creating community by creating uh, multiple applications, generic applications that you can install off a, uh, on top of a bird, bird um, DHS2 to extend the functionalities that often are not so easy to be done in, in DHS2. So you have here um, applications for creating trainings, distributing metadata packages, synchronizing. You were talking before about the um, cross-border uh, data exchange. So metadata sync will pre pretty much uh, do that job. And, but let's focus on um, landing page. Landing page is, uh, has been trained by the training app uh, somehow uh, by her big sister um, because it's sharing, it's inheriting uh, most of its code from the, from the training app that you might know. Uh, it won the, comp the, the competition uh, two years ago. And um, basically it is fully interoperable. So if you create a landing page in training app, you can import it in in a, um, the homepage app. And uh, so this is like trying to solve some problems that are coming both from shared, shared instances. You know that in shared instances, having groups that see different things when they log in. So this is about what you see after the login um, is important, but it's also important in some instances that are only uh, for one purpose to guide the users into something that makes sense for them. Um, let's go directly to um, the uh, application. So when you install the homepage app, you get this. So this is not very useful, obviously, but then you can go to the settings and you have two main uh, sections. One is the landing pages that you have, that is here on top, and then the actions. The, ac the actions, you need to think them, uh, on them about a shortcuts to a place in DHS2. It's basically that. You can create both of them from this plus button, adding a landing page or adding an action. If you had an action, you will see, um, well, very basic information that you need to fill in, uh, like a styling of that action, how that button will appear in, this, in the screen. And then you can decide also what is the application that needs to be launched by this um, by this shortcut and which are the compatibility the compatibility of, of those shortcuts because you can export them later and you need to be sure that that will work or not in the in the final instance that you're installing this uh, so that's that's about the actions but let's try to edit a landing page very quickly i i have some something prepared um so i'm gonna just put a name you will see in a couple of minutes we will have a landing page. So I'm going to create a landing page um, for a uh, World Malaria Reports. I provide an icon. I can define many other properties, like do I want the sections to be in line in the same page or multiple pages? And then do I want to attach an action? If I not, don't want, then I just, okay, put some comment, some text. Uh, this is an editor that is, um, for those of you that know Markdown, this is basically Markdown. So you can use, you can explore your own um, uh, configurations. 
I go out and I already have a landing page. That makes sense, more or less. It's very pretty, pretty simple. Then why not? I could with Markdown put some links here and link this enter uh, enter data and visualize data sections directly to the place in the in the HS2. But I'm gonna do something more complex. I want to add sections there. So I'm what I'm doing is okay. I will create a section whose name will be um, this uh, enter data and then an icon. I'm going to associate a data entry shortcut to that and put some meaningful text. Okay, I copy that text here and I save it. I'm going to do the same. Now I have a landing page with a section here. I'm going to do the same at another section with the visualizer part. So visualize your data is the name of the section. Um, and then I'm going to select a dashboard icon here that will look like a dashboard and then select the action. So the shortcut to the dashboard application and some meaningful text here. Okay, now I have what I need, but then let's go to the first text that I entered. I do no, no longer need this because I'm converted that into sections. So I'm gonna delete it and just go and see how it looks like. You see, in a couple of minutes, we have created a landing page where we have sections, you can navigate and you can click and it takes you to the place that you want, want to go in. You don't need a developer, that's the magic of this. And then, but I want to show you also some other um, features like, for example, I can import that landing page that I created previously. It is so fast as what you saw. And now I have two landing pages. I go out, I have the selection because I have access to both. I can select which one I want. And you see, it's a landing page with its sections that is pretty much what I want. And uh, well, later you have like sharing settings that you can do, but also you can export translations. Translations will look like, it's super simple actually, will look like this. So you see, this is quite easy to translate and then importing it back. It's just importing that JSON and that will be translating and taking the translation from the user configuration. Um, uh, that is it, what I wanted to show you. Um, there are more features, but I don't have time. So just the last say um, to recognize that we are all working on giant shoulders and these are my giants. These are all the, the, the enormous uh, team of ICT. And I wanted to thank also um, uh, the, the malaria department of WHO and Samaritan Poor's uh, partners that they have been uh, collaborating with us to make me, making it possible. And also my two little giants that are waiting for me at home. And thank you all. Um, this is done. And please, if you like it, vote for it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, that's a great presentation, great apps. Um, so far, we've seen four of the five, um, and I've yet to locate Saldi Youssef from um, uh, his Indonesia. If you're here, please let, yourself, let be yourself known, because otherwise we'll have to move on to the voting rounds. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a little bit of time because I don't see you, so maybe you're there under a different name, and I don't know you're here. All right. Um, all right. To give everyone a, a, the information how we are going to do the votes, um, I think we should go to the votes here. Um, this is also the sign for you to put the poll up on the uh, community of practice. Um, I will share a QR code on screen. Um, that, let's see, there we go. That you can all hopefully see now. Um, there's a QR code there, which will link you to the voting. Um, and I have a timer on screen as well um, that I will start now. And when the timer is done, we will close the votes um, and the winner will be known. Um, so maybe a final round of applause for all the app presenters um, today and the finalists.
All right. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything that can be said in the audience um, while everyone is voting. I'm going to vote myself as well. It's only right. Um, Already 54, 56 votes. Keep it, go, keep it going, people. It's going very fast. All right, 110 votes, people. That's amazing. Let's see if we can have more votes than last year. We did have uh, uh, promises from our, our hosting provider that this wouldn't happen, but we do have a number of people getting uh, too many requests, unfortunately. So uh, we'll try to maybe move off of uh, this platform for the next, uh, <laughs> the next time we'll do this. Unfortunately, keep trying. Hopefully we can uh, get some more people in. Apologies for the confusion. The vote count is still going up, so a lot of people still have success. So that's I think, good. I think it's number of requests at the same time. So keep trying, and maybe you'll beat your neighbors in a race. Can I get a show of hands for anyone who has not yet been able to vote? All right, a few of you. Keep trying, please. Sorry. One hundred and forty-two. Still votes coming through, so that's good. Once again, anyone still not able to get through? Okay, fewer. So please keep trying. You will get through. I hope. Sorry. Last call. Five, four, three, two, one, and fireworks. Hopefully everybody had a chance to vote. If you didn't, I apologize. You can write in your vote later and we'll, uh, we'll have a recount. All right. The poll is closed.
Uh, I'm going to stop sharing that screen. Um, we also have the results. I'm not sure if anyone, everyone can actually see the results, um, but we do have it. Um, it was actually very close, I must say, between three different, uh, they were all within a couple of percentages of each other. Um, but um, I'll go start with the third place. Uh, again, I don't know if anyone can see this, but um, the third place is the visualization studio from his Uganda with 24% 24, 24 of the votes. Uh, then on the second place, it's the homepage app from ICT with 26% of the votes. And on the first place, and congratulations for landing first, is the Analytics Messenger from His Tanzania by Eric Chengalo. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Renee, for, for get, getting us through that. Um, thank you, everyone, for your presentations, the finalists, and congratulations to HISP Tanzania, our winner this year. And now we will have some logistics, I believe, for the, the next uh, part of the evening or the afternoon. <laughs>